just a second, I'm trying to set up my zoom on my surface so that I can. Can you uh, allow me to share my screen, please? I've joined with two ideas, both Sujit Roy, Sujit Roy, allow both of them. Yeah, you are good to go. Looks like it is working fine. <clears throat> okay, so you guys can hear me, I assume. Um, you can talk to me as well, wherever you feel like you have a problem. Okay. The objective for today's class is to look at support vector machines, which is SPN, and understand mathematically. What we were trying to do yesterday was how you will do the minimize, uh, or minimize the function, what you have to minimize, what function is function. Let's see. Let's see. <clears throat> and so let's consider that you have this, there are some negative signs here and there are some positive signs here. Everybody here at the center step for two people. What can I do? Okay, right. <clears throat> So you have this thing, which is, you have some samples given as negative, let's say, and some samples given as positive. Let's say that I try to, you know, uh, divide uh, this line just with uh, some of the dotted points. And now what I want is, I want also to look at this point is, that what could be the maximum width that we can take? And let's say I try, try to divide again the sum of the things, which is these points. Okay. So if these were your different combinations, just plus and minus. We wanted to take out, you know, separate them. So what we can also assume is there that there is a vector w here, which is a difference here. So you can project that on to this plane, and then there is some unknown part here, which is lying exactly on this boundary. So we are trying to see the boundary here for for both of them. So it is lying somewhere here. So I can say that according to this vector as well, that you have some unknown vector here. Okay, so if I try to find out the projection of this vector on this one, we can easily write it, we remember from our classes that we have W vector, by the vector, it should be greater than or equal to some constant. Okay, so <clears throat> now if it is for your positive and it is for your negative, 
So we are trying to do that. So let's say that we're trying to make a decision rule here and we replace that C with some minus B here. So we can also write the same equation as U vector minus D greater than or equal to zero. We can write this, right? So if this is the case, then it will classify the positive point, right? So this is your first decision rule, okay? Now, what are you look? We're trying to look at this quantity here, okay? So we try to look at this quantity here, which we are trying to work at. So which is, so this is greater than zero, this quantity, this quantity is greater than or equal to zero. So also if I try to look for, for sample, for positive sample, let's say that this is some sample X here. So for positive sample, I can also rewrite it again as vector for X for positive sample, and then plus B, sorry, this will be plus B, no? because we have inserted minus B into the, so if you turn it like this, so it will be minus B, so it's going to be zero. So it's basically algebra that we're doing so. So plus B, this will be greater than or equal to, let's say that the distance is we are trying to do is zero at this point and one unit on both the sides, we're trying to get to the one, okay. So this is maximizing the boundary. So this is another equation that we have done. So it is for positive sample. Similarly, for negative sample, we can write it negative plus B greater than, uh, greater than, but uh, it should be less than equal to minus one. Okay, so now this is a third equation. So when we look at, <clears throat> so what we are trying to do here is we're deciding the boundary. Now we have these two equations, which is two and three, right? So we have these two equations, so we can combine them into one equation. And now how we can do that? So we can introduce uh, some variable here which can take into account the variation in two and three, because if it does positive and negative sample, we don't want to work with two different equations. We can uh, merge both of the equations by introducing a new variable. So let's say that I try to introduce a new constant here. So that constant can be y of sub i, right? So this y of sub i, this will be plus one for positive samples, and this will be minus one for negative samples, okay? <clears throat> so now when we uh, try to rewrite equation two, I can rewrite it as, oops, sorry. I can rewrite equation two as y of sub i x i vector since it is a vector so if i forget some time consider them a vector greater than or equal to one similarly equation three we can write it as y of sub i keeping it is the minus one so it will be now if you substitute it it will be again x i B greater than or equal to one. Okay, now you see that both of them are exactly same. So let's mark it as one of our final outcome of this equation. Okay. But now, what was what, the significance of the first equation where we said that for any u we have w u plus b? I mean the dot. So this is trying to we are trying to projection. So like you say that u is uh, some. Uh, sample which is lying on this boundary, you know, this, this area, right? Let's say consider the street, right? Like right. Boundary. In, this, in that strip, okay. Yeah, yeah, in that strip. And in this street or street, uh, strip, so in the street, you're trying to project this onto the plane. So right. it's a simple vector decomposition that we do. Right. Okay. So when we go, 
So we try to project it on the uh, on the on the but then but then if equation three says that for all negative samples we have uh -huh. its value as less than equal to minus one. Uh huh. So that's basically uh, below any number on left of the bottommost boundary, right? Yes. So, so negative is here. We as we draw and right. positive is so, here. Yeah. So in that in that strip, we don't really have condition one as necessarily true because there is a range where the value goes between zero and minus one. Yeah, we're trying to when we when we try to project it on that space. Yeah, that's true. But initially, you see here the condition that we chose was zero, right? Right. So what our objective is that we do not need to stick on this line, which is this line. We want to maximize it, right? We want to create a separation between two different classes. So we want mm -hmm. to maximize it. So at least mm -hmm. we could take a unit difference from the center point. That's why we are using one here. So it's just a simple constant, you know. It is where we are yeah, taking like basically. plus one this side and plus one, minus one this side. Yeah. Okay, okay, go ahead. Right. So now when we have this equation, which is y i, sorry, yeah, y of sub i, then x of sub i into w plus b is <coughs> greater than equal one, we try to bring it this side. So it will be y of i and x vector of sub i into w vector plus b minus one greater than equal to zero. Okay. So let's also try to figure out since we are trying to find out for the samples, which were uh, in the middle of the street. So we can uh, remove the term, which is greater than zero, and then equal to zero, we can just write them as y of sub i, x vector of sub i into w plus b minus one is equal to zero. Okay, so this is the equation that we have, which is just simplifying it further. So now let's come back again to uh, the same drawing that we were doing. So we have, so, this, so we try to draw some samples here, negative, negative, and then here were some positive, positive, okay. Or maybe like this, positive. Now we try to draw the same thing. So let's say that we had one here and then one here. Okay, so now from error origin, if you try to find out, so there is a projection which you will be doing here and there is here. So for the negative sample, right? So, so if I want to find the difference between both of them, so let's say that this was x is negative and this is x is positive, I try to find the difference between it. We'll just try to find this one, which will be x plus minus of x negative sample. So this will be your width, right? So this will be your width. So <clears throat> this is, now let's also assume that we have a unit, we can also look at this thing that if you have a vector projection in this angle, and uh, we do the normal projection, normal vector on, on this thing. So we can uh, take that normal, and W and keeping that uh, converted to unit vector. So you can write the width as X plus minus X minus, and this will be a dot product with W by the magnitude of W. So this will be converted to a unit vector. <coughs> now, if you look at this X plus, okay, and X minus, and now we look at the equation that we were doing above. So if you replace, for the sample in the middle of the street and <clears throat> y is equal to one, right? So if your y is equal to one and the sample is in the street, so x i or of w will be equal to one plus b. And similarly for uh, for for negative, it will be one plus b, and for positive, it will be one minus b because you will so this whole term. So for x plus, I can again write it as one minus b, and this whole term can be written as one plus b. So this whole equation has broken into very small parts. So now when I try to again analyze it, this whole thing can be written as x positive minus x negative dot product of of w can be written as 2 by the magnitude of w. 
So this will become the width of this tree. Now our objective is to maximize it. So, right? So we have to maximize because we are trying to increase the width. We are trying to maximize the two by w. So when we are trying to write that we want to do the maximize of two by w, we can also write it that we want to <coughs> maximize one by w, right? Then you can also write it that you can you are trying to minimize w, okay? And then just to make it a bit simpler, you can also write it as uh, sorry that you're trying to minimize one by two of w square. Okay, this is just for uh, mathematical uh, simplification when we are trying to solve the equation. So when you are trying to minimize this thing, so we want to find out the minima now, right? We want to find out the minima for this specific function. So what should, which, which sort of equation do you think will fit in? We have seen many of the equations for minima. You have Alexandre's, and then you have Laplace, you have uh, Lagrange's. So for this one, since you guys are not talking, so we will use uh, Lagrange's function, right? So what we want to do is we want to minimize this. And so I can write it in the form of Lagrange's by, <coughs> so this will be half of what we have minus it will be a complete summation over, I'll introduce a new variable, which will be the factor multiplication, which will be alpha i, okay? And now here we will have the full <coughs> equation, which we just wrote before. So, okay, so just write it here. So now if I try to write it, so I, I have to get the full equation here. So from here, which is y i x i w plus b, okay? So minus one. So I'll just put the same equation here in the Lagrange like and it will be y i by w vector of x vector plus b. And this is the full term that we are trying to take the minus one because it was the opposite side of the one. And so that will be it, okay? So this is what we are trying to do here. So this will act as our constraint. Now, <clears throat> so when we have this equation, <clears throat> so we're trying to minimize it in order to look at this one. So we are trying to get this whole thing uh, for an optimum performance. Let's not go for minimum or maximum. We're trying to find the extreme of function. So what we're trying to do is actually uh, sort, present it in the Lagrange equation and then trying to solve it. So, so how can we go about it? So what we can do in one way is we have seen in Lagrange, one we can do is we can take the partial derivative with respect to W, and then we take the partial derivative with respect to B. So if we take the partial derivative with respect to W, I can write x a vector. So we can, we will have to just uh, unhook all the components and then use it as a scalar and then put it in. So when I do this, this whole part, we'll try to do with this whole part. So firstly with this one, so it will, it will come across, it will be directed. So we will be just left with, uh, we'll just left with the W. Then you will have minus of this term. And then we have a W here, which is YI multiplied by W multiplied by X, right? And then that is <coughs> multiplied by alpha I, right? So this is the another term that we have here for this partial derivative, which will be, it is, which is interacting with W. So this will be minus sigma, and then it will be alpha i, then you have y i, and you have x i, okay? So where y i can be, you can have this is plus one, minus one, which we are doing before, okay? So 
it's not going to for simplification. So this is with respect to W. And then when we are trying to do it with respect to B, we will do the same thing. So in this term, we have B only here, which will which is getting multiplied with uh, alpha, and we have then we have with uh, W sorry Y. So we have this this thing, and uh, yeah. Okay, so this is y. So now we will have this term, which will be just uh, partial derivatives, it will be minus sigma alpha i y i. But the b will be not there, and this will be equal to zero that we are trying to do, right? So we can also write it as sigma of which is zero. And then we go ahead that we, when we uh, already got all these values, which is here, you know, this, uh, so one value that we have got is this thing, which is DL by DW, which is W minus uh, W minus <coughs> alpha I, Y, I, X, I. So if I want to write this and this is equal to zero, I can write it as W is equal to sigma running from I, you have alpha I, Y i and X i. Okay, we'll keep a note of this equation as for the trend where we're going. So let's take it again as equation five. What where we were. So equation five. So some lost somewhere. Forget it. So now we try to plug this back into the Lagrange's equation that we had here. So we had W here and W here. So what we are going to do is we are going to plug the values of W and then expand this whole equation. So just bear with me. I can understand it can be a, a very big equation to handle. But you look at this thing is when I plug this in, so I can make it as so I can but wait, I'll write like I have an equation just here for the reference here, very small. Or are you guys making notes with it? So I don't need to write it again. I don't know. So L is equal to half. This was our equation. So the square minus sigma alpha i multiplied by y i. And then you have vector x i vector minus b and so plus b minus one and that's it. So when we plug back into this function, we have the value that we, the value that we have. <clears throat> so the, we got the value as uh, w is equal to this thing, right? So alpha i y i x i. So obviously in the first case it will be very simple. So it will be l is now can be written as half of sigma so sigma. Alpha i, right? Then you have x i, and then yeah, y i and x i. Sorry, y i and x i. Okay, so this is what we got, and then we are going to take the term with the dot product. Now we have this thing, which is square so we will be having this with the dot product which will be again sigma of x alpha and x looks both of the same alpha i y i and x i okay this is what uh, so we'll try to keep a different parameter here so not to get confused so let's keep it as j okay so that we have two different x i y i x i then alpha sorry alpha i y i x i and then you have alpha j y uh, sub j and then x sub j and now we do the other term which is this one so it can be written as this thing and then you have sigma and it will be x sigma alpha uh, i y sub i x sub i and then dot product with sigma alpha j, y, j, and x, j. And then you have minus 
sigma alpha i by i d plus phi sigma alpha phi. Okay. So this is what we will get. And now if we look at the whole equation, there is only one point where we have the constant, and this is the constant that we will have it. So we can just rewrite this whole part as this thing minus p sigma alpha i y i. Okay. And since this is a constant uh, and this is equal to zero, so this whole term will be equal to zero. Okay. So we saw that somewhere here. Okay. So we saw that here. Now, <clears throat> so we have done this. And now, so if we just simplify it, by taking the common terms. So we can, <coughs> so what we are calling here, we can always take, so we can just take this function here and we'll use it first. So I will just write here sigma alpha i, and then minus of half taking, and then and run for sigma i, then sigma j, and it will be alpha i, alpha j y of sub i y of sub j and then you have x of sub i and x of sub j and that occurs so okay so now when you look at it when we try to maximize or minimize or find extremities what is dependent on is we have only this vector decomposition isn't it we have two vectors here so we are looking at these two vectors in order to uh, find the optimization, right? So this, this optimization is completely dependent on these two vectors, which are xi and dot product of xi. So now let's, again, so if I try to solve it uh, in a, put all of them into the decision rule that we draw in the big name. And so if I try to put them in the decision rule, we can say that it will be sigma, alpha i y sub i x sub i by u vector plus b greater than equal to zero then this is the condition true for the positive sample right so this is the condition that we got and so this this whole system can work perfectly fine if you just make a program on it completely perfectly if you work fine for all the linear samples right because we have been dealing with the linear sphere and other stuff, linear, linear sample. So in order for it to work with, uh, say, a uh, space which is uh, not completely linear, OK? So let's say that you have somewhere this space. So you have two same class here. And then you have two classes which are here. Now, obviously, this is not possible for us to separate this linearly. Uh, so we might uh, need something. But if you look at it from this point, that if I connect the and I try to find a projection of this one, on this thing and similar projection of this on this thing. So now we see that we can create a hyperplane, which is subplane or projection thing. And when you project that into a new uh, transformation uh, thing, then we will be able to transform our data and it will be separated. That's why in machine learning or any other space, when you are looking at the samples and other things, Many times you will be able to see that uh, when we, we we are transforming or when we are doing this thing. Sorry. Yeah, when we are transforming or when you're doing this thing, it is very much, uh, it is preferred when you transform, it becomes separable or something. So let's say that this whole separation thing and transformation is represented by a new sphere, which is phi of x, okay? So now you require, uh, what you want to do is 
you are just projected it. So you want to maximize phi of x, sorry, phi of xi, and then phi of xj, right? So this is what you're trying to maximize. So for this, you are trying to uh, find, a, uh, so you're, tr you're trying to identify something which is dependent again on x bar. And then, <clears throat> so what should we do in order to do this thing? So for here, then the story came up like if what what will happen like if i make a new function right which can take care of this projection then i should be able to uh, get all these samples so what i can do is like if i write a uh, let's say if we write a new kernel which is let's say z and it is like it will take care of the xi and xj it should be equal to phi of xi and phi of xj. So here come the here. So here was the concept of kernel that came up. So uh, then we were trying. Uh, so the mathematician tried, and then we had different different kernels. I think we can we can we can look at the kernels uh, later in some other class today. And just focus on this thing. Then we can do have we have let's say we have a linear kernel. So linear kernel can be written as u to v vector plus one raised to the power of some n, right? And then if you have some polynomial kernel or you need, uh, so there is another kind of kernel, and not say it's polynomial, but there's another kind of kernel that you can use, which comes as e raised to the power minus magnitude of xi minus x j by sigma and if this <coughs> sigma is uh, so this is another kernel that you can use for the functions which are for, for for the graph that we were looking at where you had the data points separated like this and then you have the data points like this so it would be able to you know create a given bounded function which are non-linear for non-linear domain if one more thing if your sigma is very small, which is like a sigma 10 to zero, then you can see that this will go to infinity and it will be a problem of overfitting. Okay, so there can be a problem of overfitting by the sigma. So we can, we have to keep a note of this thing. So this whole thing came into picture uh, looking at, so this is what we, we're trying to do when we're trying to create a distance boundary and trying to understand uh, the whole thing, which is in the SVM. Okay. Now, so we were trying to, so what we're trying to do is like the maximization of what we have learned is the maximization only depends actually on the dot products. So this was, uh, so it's a bit of a story that I, uh, when I was attending the lecture, it's online. I heard it. So, you know, so this whole thing was uh, proposed uh, by a Russian professor, and uh, it was it was in the master's thesis that he did. It was Vapnik, and he did uh, in his master's thesis. Some introduced some of the support vectors, and he looked at it, and he said that okay. So when he moved to USA and he was working on this thing, so he said, I so neural nets were coming into the picture. And he was unable to understand, or you can say not unable to understand, but he, he thought that uh, neural nets are not going to, uh, you know, work that much, it's not uh, that good. So he proposed that, so we were working on the problem at that time was handwriting, uh, handwritten digits recognition. So he said, my SVM can perform much better on it, and you have to try it. So there was a bet on that thing with the professor. And then he, some of them tried it, and it yes, it proves to be better. He also submitted the paper, free paper on this on NeurIPS, and all of them got rejected. <laughs> but later on, after uh, some after some years, uh, you know, people came to notice that the importance of support for machines and how it is uh, going to help. Now for this optimization algorithm, sometimes uh, it will be uh, we have 
been able to see is uh, this thing. For the optimization problem and other stuff, we have been using gradient boosting and other stuff. So we might look at that when we were we, when we are uh, doing uh, this thing, which is boosting algorithm or something else. So we'll not try to go on to the deep of that one today itself. So just you can say that if I try to say to you is in the terms of uh, maximization, you want to try to uh, you know minimize or something which is a related term that we were doing it yesterday. So you can always write it as minimum of uh, long to the real. And then you have this thing, which is W square plus cost function, which is I running from I to N. And then we try to maximize 0, 0,1 minus YI of F of function of that. <clears throat> Trying to do something like this. So this becomes your regularization term. And this becomes your loss function. So we will study this more in when we are be covering neural nets and other stuff. So optimization, gradient boosting, and other stuff. So it would be more helpful in those scenarios. So <clears throat> this would be it for today's class, as we only uh, were here to discuss uh, this thing, which is uh, neural nets. Uh, sorry, uh, understanding the mathematics behind this PM. I hope it is clear, and then it is fine with you guys. Can you, can you share the screen? I kind of lost you at the end. So. Okay, you want me to share again? Yeah, it's just a few points at the end. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So um, basically, and just before we started talking about just before we talked about kernels, can we mm -hmm. can you scroll up a little bit? Yes, so the so we plugged in everything in the Lagrange formulation mm -hmm. and then we talked about how it's it's the xi dot xj that's the mm -hmm. key factor over here. So, yeah. and then you this 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 equation that you know summation of alpha i y i xi dot w plus b is greater than zero. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, what what's the what's the argument that leads to that? So this is the same equation that, that we did for that, decision boundary, isn't it? Right, right, right. So uh, for each individual uh, sample, each each individual sample, the sum this value yeah. of x dot w plus b is greater than zero. So the, for the, for the sum, it will be greater than zero. Is that the argument? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But then we also have alpha i added to it, right? So alpha Do we have I, no, yo, okay. So alpha is a quantity that we said when we explained or when we were designing the Lagrange function for multiplication of it. So it can mm -hmm. be, uh, you can say that it's, uh, it is a scalar quantity that we are considering. Yeah. So it does it, does it have? So is it is it non-negative? Yeah, it is non-negative. We can go for negative as well. Not because because otherwise alpha i y x i need not be you know dot w plus b need not be greater than. Mm -hmm. I see that. So I, I think alpha uh, should be greater or equal to zero because it was a non-linear uh, constraint. Actually, actually it's alpha. A non, no, it's a linear constraint that we are having here. Probability constraint, sorry. So this this condition will only be true if alpha into y is always positive. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I mean, we'll have to supply some additional uh, clause to support this statement. Yeah. Only if uh, alpha into y is positive, then this whole that simply it's each individual term is positive so the whole uh -huh. thing will be positive mm. so for all the negative samples alpha i will have to be negative so that the product is positive and then this holds and all the positive samples alpha will be positive then the product will be positive yes so i mean there's something missing here in terms of how <clears throat> we are forming this statement no, actually, we when we form the statement here in the terms for this thing, which is we're substituting the value for the w here, which we calculated from the Lagrange's function, yeah. so which we're trying to minimize, right? Isn't it? So we are looking at so when we are looking for the positive samples, so we are looking for the positive samples here. 
to be her and then so this whole thing should be greater than equal to zero so this is why i x i u will be here why i can be plus one alpha will be positive isn't it so basically we had an equation then we set its two derivatives to be zero mm -hmm. so that it's a uh, minima I'm, I'm not i don't follow you when you say that you know we are looking for positive x size i mean up until the derivative setting the derivative to zero is very standard you know definition of a minima assuming that it's a minima it could be a maxima but we are, we are saying that it's a minima we know that but mm -hmm. then uh, how why are we you know talking about positive sample suddenly it's, it's actually it goes both ways right it will go both ways no that was the why i yeah. spoke about no? it can be plus 1 and minus 1 yeah. so, so so basically my point here is that i understand how mm -hmm. you know this and the lagrange minimization works but i'm, I'm not sure how we are taking that and then you know, writing down everything that follows it which is <laughs> i don't know it's just not clear to me at this point mm. okay let's say let's let's go back a little so i had the two uh, derivatives i set them to zero Mm -hmm. and then i use them you know i put put that back into the longer equation then i use constraint number 6 to set some terms to zero and my constraint 5 has already been used you basically plugged it back into the equation yeah, yeah. so uh, what we get is essentially we do not have w anymore what we have in this equation that is equal to zero is a bunch of x i s x j s y i s and y j s which we know are dependent based on x i and x j mm -hmm. uh, so what exactly do we get when we equate this equal to zero what is the unknown that we find out finally as a result of plugging back equation 5 and 6 back into equation l what do we solve for when we plug that back so when okay so what we are trying here to we Yeah, yeah. So what we're trying here, to, we were trying to find out a, uh, uh, you know, the minimization using the Lagrange, and then when we put it on the decision boundary, we try to look at the decision boundary in terms of uh, if uh, we can use the decision boundary in order to linearly separate them or not. Okay. So this is going to help them for linear separable. That is correct. and then since we are trying to deduce something we will be going for the complex one which is the projection matrix okay do do okay, i'm unable to understand question. the question actually so yeah so my question is my question is that once we plugged everything back in and then you know the the equation that you have circled right just just above it we get the formulation that is mm -hmm. you know that involves alphas y's and x's mm -hmm. now my x's and my y's are known they are you know they are data points mm -hmm. what i have remaining is alpha is mm -hmm. now uh, what you are saying is that in some ways we plug this what, whatever information we have here we plug mm -hmm. that back in to our initial formulation mm -hmm. which was you know the definition of our decision boundary and then we say that it will help me determine a w right uh -huh. uh, but uh, the initial formulation is as we as I, what i opened with was that it is dependent on my choice of alpha i uh -huh. so there is something alpha i have to satisfy certain criteria so that yeah this so, circled equation has can hold otherwise uh -huh. it wouldn't satisfy so uh You agree to this equation that we had. Is, let's say that y i, and then let's say that we have w, and then you have x i, and plus b, and it is plus greater b, than equal to one. And then you introduce something right. which is uh, let's introduce uh, the term, which is for providing a regression or something like that for right. optimization, right? Right. 
Okay. So we have uh, so the optimization problem that we are able to see is actually was was, was this one only. You know, the optimization problem that will become from here will be the minimum that we will be having. So it will be minimum of uh, of that twenty two will be four thirty, and so it comes back to the same thing with the cost function, and we have then this thing that the term that we have introduced now, i and and then we have i i. So then the c becomes your regression parameter, which you can say that case of which can be it is allow small uh, constraints to be easily ignored for larger margin, and when it is higher, it can it is hard to ignore, so it will have a narrow margin, and when it is infinity. It will be. Uh, it will enforce enforces all the constants which is the hard margin. So it is the now we are adding. We are adding information. I mean, like you're going ahead. I doubt that's much more basic oh, okay. than that. No. <laughs> okay. Okay. So let's yeah. let's okay. Let let's try this thing. That. Uh, um, so let's try this thing. Uh, <clears throat> The truth factor is I'm unable to understand your question. And my question so, is, so yeah. Uh, yeah. How do I solve the equation for L? What do I once I have L is equal to summation L five minus mm -hmm. half double sum, and then I have a decision boundary condition which goes L five I x i dot w plus b is greater than zero. I have these two equations, mm -hmm. and you put uh, them into your program uh, for deciding the decision boundary. And I solve for what do I solve for at this using these two equations? Do I solve for W? Do I solve for alphas? And, and what is the unknown here? We are solving for W here, no? Because we are trying to maximize the weight. We are always been solving for W. It's like we're trying to create a decision boundary which is uh, going to be for the projection vector. Okay. And so so it will become a scalar quantity, and then trying to maximize the whole term, which is. W by the U projection plus B greater than equal to zero. Right and okay, okay. So here's another thing that I'm confused about in doing mm -hmm. that. Let's so that that so serves the purpose of my circled equation. Now what what my L says is L. What does my L supply here? L is an equation, right? What, what, so oh, it's, an, it's an it's an expression right now. It's an expression. So yeah, what, what so, Lagrangian, so Lagrangian was uh, we used in order to uh, find out the minimization problem, isn't it? We're trying to minimize uh, the equation that we had, uh, which was here. We were having, I think, so we had this constraint here. Uh, You're yeah, basically minimizing and, W square. Yeah, yeah. So we were trying to minimize the W square, and then we had the L here. We have the constraint, and then we went into plugging in all the values of right, w right, uh, right, into right, that, right. and then we have uh, this thing. We resulted with the L, which is uh, the output. Oh, sorry, solving the L for and trying to minimize this. So there is only two vector quantity that we were able to identify, which were x i and x j. So the minimization problem we tried to find out was this thing, which we were trying to do that. It depends on this one. So we try to minimize this thing. So it's like you can say it's a. Uh, will it be correct if I say that it was done in order to find the optimization and looking at it depend on these two vectors only. So this thing that we can derive from this equation probably. If you are trying to ask what does it mean to have this equation, why are we using Lagrangians to do that? And secondly, oh. when we are talking about non-linear kernels, we are still dealing with the standard definition of dark products, right? We are not going into. Okay, so space. we did, uh, yeah. So we did not go on into <coughs> the other space of the kernel. We uh, we were talking, so we tried to do for the linear, and then I introduced the concept of the kernel here. So for non-linear space and other space, we will have to uh, go into. There are few other loss optimization techniques that we will have to cover, and. Uh, Stop sharing and then.
So there are a few other optimization techniques that are for the convex function and uh, for the other function of how you will be doing to optimize it. So for that, we we'll use some borrow some concept of neural net or your know, optimization. So I can tell you that straight away. It's like the same thing that I just wrote after that because the, the variation is a loss function. That was the constraint of optimization formula that was obtained. And then you can uh, do the convex function uh, optimization using the gradient descent algorithm. Or so for that, we'll have to consider the gradient descent. So I was thinking that once we do that gradient descent to the next class of no, functions, that's, be yeah, that's, for that's OK. I mean, yeah. yeah. So fundamentally, the idea remains the same. Yeah, so I get, so it, it, my purpose was to explain you the idea behind it because once you convert the convert the gradient descent in something else, it will be very easy for you to understand the minimized problem for the non uh, for the non um, non linear space where you have the uh, find the minima of a polynomial or something like that. Okay, okay, fair enough, fair enough. So okay, one last thing that I want to ask, mm -hmm. which is that if if my definition for this minimization problem is you know, so fundamentally based on dot products, you know, we, we said that explicitly we want things to be, you know, that x i dot x j yeah. is something desirable. Yeah. So then how did we end up with kernels that are exponential? I you know, prefer to go with things that are vector based. So in the kernel of the polynomial kernel, we used x i and x j, no? Didn't we? Yeah, we did, but okay. but. Does e raised to the power x i minus x j by sigma? By sigma, yeah. Is, does it does it relate in some ways to dot products? I don't know. I mean, I don't know that. So I'm asking. Oh, okay. No, no, no. It's not not a problem actually. So if somewhere relates to dot product, I'll not say that somewhere relates to dot product. It is an already defined kernel. So this is a defined kernel that we were looking at in the terms of linear, and this is a defined kernel for. Sorry, yeah, for the linear kernel, you have this uh, definition given, and then for the polynomial kernel, we have this one. So, sorry, defined one in the terms of the vector space where you have the x, <coughs> i, and x, you can consider them as the support vector. So, you can take that, it can be, you can convert them all into the, you know, the support vectors completely. This thing is basically, uh, it's, it's, it looks like a Gaussian. Norm, yeah, yeah, of, okay. norm of so, that uh, is square. Okay, basically. RTF, yeah. Uh, so yeah, and so radial basis function or right. So it's, it's basically a Gaussian based on distance between the two points because it's mm -hmm. difference and then something something like that, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it. <clears throat> So I'm like there are there are concepts related to primal and dual formulation as well, but I was not aware of how many. People are aware with yes, actually, your talk I had noted it down when you talked about it yesterday. I couldn't read up on it, so yeah, so I, was, so I uh, I can do it some other time as well with doing the primal and dual problem, but that will be a complete mathematical course that we are going to follow. Then it will be very uh, in terms of like primal version of a classifier. So, for example, that if we I just want to give you a go getting home note. That when we try to do the primal version, so we have the primal version of the classifier can be written as w vector x plus b, whereas the dual version can be written as f x. But we use both of them, right? <laughs> yeah, we use both of them. So. Uh, when you will be going for uh, the formulation, you will come to understand that uh, you will be minimized, you will be just left with uh, the summation over the function which is, can be represented, but we have already done alpha i, y i, x i, x plus c. So we work with, when you work with fluid dynamics, we have this kind of a situation where there's a strong form of the equation and then there's a weaker form of the equation mm -hmm. because your primal thing is an absolute thing. And yeah, primal and is like uh, it will, it, uh, it can give you a solution or not, maybe, but dual right. is going to give you one. Like right, it, right, it's right. Compulsion to give you one. Right. So that's something. So we can. 
to the primal derivation and dual derivation as well <laughs> and into the transform feature space but i am it is in the different transform feature space and then we can see what uh, it is there to learn from that which is your when you introduce your kernel trick or something so if can't i stay okay so just i'm just thinking i i i hope yeah people are over time so if somebody is <laughs> thinking that they don't uh, they don't they're not entertained with it so you are fine to leave that we are, don't have anything new to discuss but yeah so i'll just come up to this equation again which we were discussing here which was the next one right? so we're discussing this equation so here i can actually uh, introduce the kernel isn't it for the learning when i'm trying to do this thing i can reduce this whole thing with k of xj or oh, sorry xi and xj Yeah. Yes. So then it becomes a kind of function, and now you have an optimization problem. Does that solve your answer? If it was from the beginning. So there comes the kind of trick uh, in in terms of uh, two different space. So it can be like abstract. It can learn and apply without explicitly computing that we are trying to compute by x or something. <clears throat> and so there are different kernels. So you have uh, this one, the Gaussian kernel that we have already seen, which was here. And so this was the Gaussian kernel that we so this is a two sigma square sorry so this will be our Gaussian kernel and I do this there and then we have polynomial kernel so polynomial kernel can be anything that I think you guys be able to know a polynomial kernel can be written as <coughs> one plus for d greater than zero. Right, <clears throat> so this is the yeah. polynomial kernel can be written. Wait, so it can it be polynomial like your linear D. What? But your linear kernel has the power n, so it's yeah, yeah. So yeah. yeah, so it's like I come if you combine, like if you combine with the one, so if it is equal to one, it becomes your linear kernel. If it is That's greater right. than one, then so n is equal to one, it will be your linear kernel. N is greater than one, and then it will be your polynomial kernel in a simpler fashion. Okay, for a in, uh, for a different different feature space and all that stuff. Okay. And phi is simply a transform variable, right? Yeah. So phi x is like just transforming it into a different uh, space. Right. Okay. That's why then we use phi here. Okay. I wish I would have some of the. I'll try to collect some of the examples. Okay, and I'll drop them in the terms of. Uh, How with the kernel change, it is affecting our uh, this thing, uh, our uh, decision boundaries. I'll try to. There was some lectures from the Oxford. I'll try to look at some of the PPTs. Okay, and I'll drop you drop it in probably in Slack, and you guys can look at those figures and in the different different kernel space. And then, if you have any other questions on that one, and we can discuss. We can always discuss. It would be nice if we actually implemented this L equation and decision boundary wall equation, and saw it work. That would make things a lot clearer for me, at least. <laughs> <laughs> that would have made things clear, but uh, it would be very like difficult take, to cover all of them, you know, in this period of yeah, time. Yeah, just take ten data points, take ten data points, and then it doesn't have to give a great fit. We'll we'll engineer it so that you know it's a nice straight line. That's the decision boundary. Uh, there should be. Uh, there should. Be, uh, let's look for some of the toolboxes. Uh, there are some yeah. toolboxes which we can use for plugging in this equation and other stuff, and then we can probably try that. Out. I think you said you are from Fluid Dynamics, so you might have some toolboxes, no, for plugging in this uh, simulation. Yeah, but I don't work with this kind of optimization stuff. It's very... oh, okay. It's okay. more partial differentials. So. Oh, okay. All right. <clears throat> so then that would be it. If nobody else has a question, okay. Somebody send me privately. Have you tried debugging the last code? Mine also is showing dot not found in path C one having script installed six and from six import string I O. Yes. No, I did not get a minute till now. Till I'm not balanced yet. So. <laughs> uh i've not tried that uh, so this is a note for uh, ca please uh, look at the code for yesterday and try to solve it why it was not working for some of the people 
especially if you look at the graph based plot uh, why graph is not getting initialized okay so that would be it for uh, from my side anybody else has any comments to make there's so less students today in just two or in mathematics <laughs> that's why i do not for mathematics the lectures right Okay, uh, so that is it. Then thank you very much for your time. Have a great day.